Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our daily 10 minutes of Torah. We learned a portion of the week, and we'll do the, we'll pick up where we left off yesterday. Oh, it's the fourth reading, actually, we left off. Okay, so we're on page 497. So we learned till now about the uh, making of the ark, the table, the menorah, and then we learned about the roof, the different levels and the different tapestries and so on. So today we'll start learning about the actual structure, the walls. God then gave Moses, with verse 15 on the bottom, God then gave Moses the instruction for construction of the tabernacle building itself. You must have the artisans make the planks for the tabernacle out of acacia wood. These planks must be placed vertically, side by side, to form the three walls of the tabernacle. The front, the east wall was open. (coughs) The length of each plank must be 10 cubits, which is tall. That's the height. (coughs) Thus, the height of the tabernacle will be 10 cubits. The width of each plank must be one and a half cubits, and the breadth of each must be one cubit. Have the artisans whittle the bottom of each plank so as to fashion two tenons, each one cubit, each one cubit long, a half a cubit wide, and a quarter of a cubit broad, parallel to each other. You must have them do the likewise to all the planks of the tabernacle Have them leave a space of a half a cubit between the two tenons of each plank. Now, I'd like to show you what he's talking about. You take a look at the next page on the top left. So you have the two things that are coming out. You see it? On the bottom of each plank, there were two tenons that then later went straight and fit right into the sockets. Mm -hmm. You must have them make the following number of planks for the tabernacle. 20 planks for the southern side. So how long is the tabernacle? If each you have twenty planks and each one is a is a is a cubit and a half wide, so that makes it thirty in length. The interior length of the tabernacle will thus be thirty cubits, since each plank is a cubit and a half wide. You must have to make <coughs> forty silver bases, which we call sockets, each one cubit tall, each one each one cubit tall, one cubit wide, and three quarters of a cubit thick. These, so you have two for each plank, right? So if the plank is a, a, a cubit and a half wide, and you have two pl- two sockets, so each one is three quarters of a cubit, right? Yeah. These forty bases will be placed under the twenty planks. Two bases under one plank. Each base will be hollowed out to accommodate one of the two tenons protruding from the planks above it, so it fit right in. Similarly, there will be two bases under each following plank. Each base hollowed out to accommodate one of the two tenons protruding from the plank above it. <clears throat> you got it? For the second side of the tabernacle to the north, there must be likewise 20 planks with silver 40, 40, with their 40 silver bases, two bases under one plank and two bases under each following plank. For the back of the tabernacle to the west, you must have to make six planks each of whose one and a half cubit width will be fully exposed inside the tabernacle. So what you got inside the tabernacle really was a 10 cubit wide space. So here you have only nine cubits, right? Six planks that are each one and a half cubits wide equals nine. Where do you have the other, with the other one cubit? So that's what he's gonna explain now. You must have them make another two planks for the back corners of the tabernacle. One cubit of each of these corner planks will be covered by the breadth of the planks forming the northern and southern southern walls. Therefore, only half a cubit of each corner plank will be exposed inside the tabernacle. Thus, the interior width of the tabernacle will be 10 cubits. I know you don't know what he's saying. So let me show it to you on the picture. <laughs> this is, if you don't have pictures there, this is going to be tough. 
the other architect here. So. <laughs> Actually, what I want you to see, you know, you don't see it. Yet. So we'll have you look at the page <coughs> over here. On page 501 on bottom right. If you take a look at the west wall, which is over here. Over there you have six planks, right? So they're all exposed to the inside, correct? Uh, and, right. And then you have another two on the corners. Right. Of which one cubit is parallel to the 20 cubits going to the north and the east. And then you have a half a cubit on each side that's exposed inside. You see that? North and south, right. So, so what's the width? So it's a total of 10 cubits width inside. 12 on the outside. Right, right. You get that? Okay. Seems kind of narrow. I mean, 10 cubits is about 15 feet. 16 feet, it's not so narrow. It's not a big area, it's not a big room. No. Right. It's the, 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 the whole tabernacle was less, was smaller than this library. Smaller than this room. Because you had 30 feet, it was 20 cubits long, which is about 30 feet. This room is more than 30 feet long. Right. And it's much more than 10 cubits. It's much, you know, it's a small room. Less wide than the library. Much more, a lot less. Each panel is four feet. Four. So, so you have 16. Two, three. Four. It's 12. And you have one more, 16. Exactly. 16 mm -hmm. feet wide. And by 30 feet long. It's not a big room. Very intimate space. You with me? Where are we now? Okay, it's verse 24, right? All the planks must be flush against each other and the, on the, at the bottom. This will be accomplished by shaving the perimeter of the lower cubits of each plank so that its tenons will fit snugly into the bases underneath them, thus making the outside of the bases flush with the planks and the planks flush against each other. Planks must also be flush against each other at the top. This will be accomplished by notching the tops of the planks so that every pair of adjoining planks can be fitted together into a rectangular band. This must also be done with two, with the two planks on the southern corner, on the two corners. As you can see on top, you see them little rings that go mm -hmm. into the top. Yeah, but in the middle picture, that's what I'm talking about. Bands, you can see the the the, the square silver uh, bases. This is on top, not on bottom. Yeah, no, but okay, in the middle picture, it's the top. One was uh, one base, uh, one thing was locking two planks exactly. right. together. Exactly, that's the whole idea, to hold them tight together. Mm -hmm. Thus, the, on the west side, there will be a total of eight planks with their silver bases, 16 bases in all, two bases under each one plank, and two bases under the following plank. As for how these planks will be held together, you must have to make cross bands, cross bars out of acacia wood, five for the planks of one, longest uh, five for the planks of one long side of the tabernacle five crossbars for the planks of the other long side of the tabernacle and five crossbars for the planks of the back wall of the tabernacle which is the west have them make okay what he's talking about over here if you take a look at the next page also you'll see them on the top left these are the crossbars. Two on the outside and one goes right in the middle. See it? Bless you. Bless you, bless you. So it holds everything together tight. <clears throat> Got it? Um, Wait a minute. That's, on the, that's, that's going to be on the outside? Outside, yeah. yeah. Well, the, the middle bar is on the inside. As you yeah, see, yeah, the yeah, hole yeah, goes yeah, right yeah. through the inside. It goes through the inside. Where are we? And the crossbars are made from gold? Yeah, they are. Wow. I don't know where I am. 27. Five crossbars for the planks of the other long side of the tabernacle and five crossbars for the planks on the back wall of the tabernacle to the west. Why five? You can see in the picture you only see three. One on top, one on bottom, and one in the middle. Right. The answer is that there were ten planks, right? So they made two for the top, 
15 feet each, so they met. 15 feet, 15 feet, mm -hmm. so they met in the middle, so that's four really. Two long ones, that really were four. And then the middle one was just one long one. So it's a total of five. Wow, that's two of the ha two of the half length crossbars will traverse the wall at the height of seven and a half cubits, and the other two half length crossbars will traverse the wall at the height of two and a half cubits. That's why when you have one or more to the top, one more to the bottom. The full length crossbar will traverse the wall at the wall's mid height, and that was five cubits right. from the ground. The full length crossbar at the wall. The wall's mid-height must be inserted into the holes drilled through the planks from one end of the tabernacle to the other. It's an amazing thing how they were able to pull this off. No drills, no nothing. How did they do this? How did they drill holes through walls? They must have had like hand thick. drills, you know. Yeah, probably yeah. hand drill. Yeah. 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 Which is what? What is it made of? It's just like, you know, your electric drill, but you, you do this. You're right. Yeah. It takes time, <laughs> right. but you do it. When I was a kid, yeah. that's how you drill, Ben, yeah. in an electric drill. Okay, I'm going to say a few words now. Yeah. Let's read another two verses, and then I want to explain something about these planks. A spiritual concept. You must have the artisans overlay the planks with gold. The half-length crossbars, unlike the full-length crossbars, will be affixed to the planks externally. On the outside perimeter of the walls, as you see in the picture, you must have the artisans make gold rings for the planks. They're fixed to their outer surface, as you can see here, right? To hold the half-length crossbars at the correct height and gold and gold half tu tubes to cover the crossbars over the rest of the width of the planks. And thereby the artisans will, in effect, overlay the crossbars with gold. So when you take the wooden crossbar and you put it through those rings, it's covered with gold from all sides because the planks are also covered with gold. So it's in totally... And wrapped with gold. How did they affix the uh, the tube rings? With the nails, I guess. Something. Or, something. Yeah. 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 or maybe they. But you don't see any. Yeah. You don't see anything. They didn't have screws then, but no. they had something that they knocked it into. Yeah. Maybe a glue. Or something like yeah. That. I don't know. Maybe they had screws, but either nails or screws. <coughs> yeah. Nails, probably. Yeah. Where are we? Thirty. When, there, when you erect the tabernacle for the purpose of installing the priests in the service, you may, be a, you may be assisted by others. When, however, it comes time to erect the tabernacle for its ongoing use, in other words, what he's saying over here is, the tabernacle, there were seven days, when they first, before they put it up permanently, they would erect it every day and take it apart. And that was the week of the inauguration, <coughs> not inauguration, maybe inauguration, but it was also the week that the priests were installed into their office. So it was put up and taken down. During that week, every time they put it up and take, take it down, they were able to get help. But he's saying the one time <coughs> when they put it up, fixed, that that you know, remains up. And that's what he's saying at 30. When you erect the tabernacle for the purpose of installing the priests in their service, those seven days you may be assisted by others. When, however, it comes time to erect the tabernacle for its ongoing use, you must erect the tabernacle in its proper order yourself, as you will have been sown on, by me on the mountain. Let me explain to you, if you go back, and this is important, how, what were these planks made of? You Acacia. remember? <coughs> Acacia wood. Mm -hmm. Acacia wood in Hebrew is atze shitim. So it's, uh, it's explained by the Rebbe and many, many chassidic discourses that were said by the Rebbe's that there's a symbolism over here, very powerful. The word shitim for acacia wood also comes, has the same root as the word shtus. You know what shtus means? Shoteh. Foolish. A fool. Right? Shoteh. It has the same word. When it says about the woman who's an adulterer, the sota. What does the Torah say? Kisiste. So he's used the word, same exact root and, and letters as the word shitim and shtus. It means a woman goes astray. She goes off the right path and, and it's a silly path. Kisiste ishte. When a woman goes off the right path and goes off the good path and in a silly path. So the word shtus, shitim, shtus, comes from the same word as shtus. Why would you make planks for the... 
temple out of planks of wood that I have the same what's the symbolism here? What's the meaning of this word which connotates silliness and folly and shtu? The answer is that's exactly what the temple's per, the whole purpose of the temple was for. And the, the words of the Rebbe's to be mahapech, to transform the shtuth of the unholy, the unholy follow. What happens to us? We, we sin. Why do we sin? That woman, why does she sin? Because she's being silly. We sin because we're silly. We act foolish. How do you counterbalance acting foolish because of shtuth? What's the counterbalance to that? To act holy in a way of shtuth. Holy folly. What does holy folly mean? Sometimes you say to yourself, I'll give you an example. I can't keep kosher. Why can't I keep kosher? Because my wife's not going to let me. My mother is not going to let me. I'm not going to be able to eat by my family. It's too, it's too crazy for me to not start transforming my whole house into kosher. No one's going to be with me on this. It's going to be hard to convince. It's a little, it's a little out of my norm. Shtus. That's shtus de kedusha. The folly of holiness. A person says, so do it anyway, because it's taka crazy, it maybe indeed a little crazy. It's off the, there's, there's a, the regular path, the normal path, and then there's off the normal path to either negative, sinfulness, which is off the good path, which is unholy folly, and then there's off the, the regular normal path in the high, in the, in the holy side, which is to do something which is taka a little out of your norm. A person says, I have a, an hour a day to learn Torah, or 15 minutes a day to learn Torah. I simply can't learn Torah more than that. I will, I'll come late to work, I'll come late, to, I, uh, I'll miss my favorite exercise. Who knows what, we have so many things going on. I designated that my normal designation for learning is 15 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. It says the, the, it says, it says the Torah, but you should make atzei shitim, the Beis Hamikdash, you should make with atzei shitim, with planks, the, ba- the basis, meaning the foundation of the Torah, of the holy temple, of a Jew's temple is shtus. Not to go in the, in the way of the norm. To go outside of your comfort zone. To go outside of the norm, in a holy way. In a good way. To learn, you say 15 minutes? No, you'll do 20 minutes. It's a little uncomfortable. It's a little, I have to, I have to maneuver a few things. It's not easy. That's shtus dusha. And how do you transform this Meshugan the world that we live in, so sad Meshugan the world. It's a crazy world. It's a it's a shtus world, a world full of silliness, by being silly in the in a folly in a holy way, going outside of your comfort zone, outside of what you think is the norm, what you believe that you you know. And the truth of the matter is, we always put we all put we're putting ourselves in a box most of the time. You say I can designate fifteen minutes. I can designate a half hour. I can come once a week to daven. You, you, put your, you put yourself in the box. You time. put yourself in the box. Why do you say once a week? That's the limit. You're putting limits on yourself. That's the, maybe that makes sense on one level because you really have other things to do. Mm-hmm. Says the Torah of Asisa Sakroshim, the foundation of the Mishkan, the walls of the Mishkan. What's going to keep your walls intact? Atze Shitim, wood that comes from Shitim, which is Shtus, meaning the Shtus of Kedusha. When you do things outside of the norm, a little folly, a little bit meshuga, as they say, in a good way, that's when you have a real temple. And that's how you transform the, the, the craziness, the silliness, the, 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 abnormal, the abnormal reality of this world. When the Jews and people in general are abnormally holy. Not just normal holy, abnormally holy. Yeah. To go outside of your comfort zone, basically. That's what it means in a nutshell. And that's what the, that's what Adaveid is. It was normal to live in your nice neighborhood. That Rebbe said in 1950, my boys, we're not normal. We're going outside. We're going to break through. Go take your family and move to come go move to Siberia. Take your family and move to Cambodia. Take your family and move to Alaska. Take your family and move to who knows where. Hey, there's no kosher food. There's no kosher. There. There's no nothing. Make it work. Go a little out of your normal, out of your comfort zone. 
not a little, maybe even a lot. We made ourselves a normal path which says, I can only do this. Rabbi used to always say it in a very, very sarcastic way. Sometimes we were sarcastic about it. So we, you need, you need your daily milk, and your daily, daily kosher orange juice, and you need the daily newspaper. That's what people. That's normal, right? That's the normal for a yid, right? And he's kosher bakery, a kosher, kosher everything near his house. He wants to be within the neighborhood. That was that shtustik dusha. I'd say shitim. You got to build a temple of Yiddishkeit out of crazy wood. <laughs> crazy walls, meaning the walls have to be made of the type of actions, the type of behavior that goes out of the norm. And, and, there's, and, there, was, and there was a person in the last hundred years that broke all norms, it was the Lubavitcher Rebbe. He broke every norm. Does that kind of wood exist today? Uh, I'm not does. sure. Yeah. It could it be it familiar. does. Yeah, it it could be it does. does. The Rebbe broke every norm. Every single norm. Sent shluchim all over the world. People thought it was shtus. Yeah. It was. But shtus the it was the holy folly. All these things that I did. Uh, take a mitzvah tank, a truck, <laughs> put, put, put two bullhorns on, the, on, the, on its uh, engine, on the front engine, you know, on the front hood, and go into Manhattan blaring Hasidic music. On the Fifth yeah. Avenue, stopping people on the street. Yeah. Are you Jewish? Come in, put in film. Are you Jewish here? Take candles for Shabbos. Whatever it is, he broke every norm. People do this, but today that's the norm. That became the norm. So today we have to break new norms. And you're constantly going out of the comfort zone. When a yid goes out of the comfort zone, he's in touch with God. As long as you're in your comfort zone, you're in touch with yourself. You go outside of your comfort zone. That's when you become. That's when you're able to get in touch with with godliness, because godliness is outside the norm. May you all when maybe be a little crazy. The idea is as Abyssal Meshuga is okay. In a good way. Have a wonderful day, everyone. We should have an outside so everybody sees it. I agree with that. I like that idea. We should have an outside. But you convinced them they can bring the air condition outside too. You know, it's so beautiful. It's beautiful weather. Today. We don't need air conditioning. Beautiful weather. That I don't know. You have a shul, you have to have an Aaron Kedis, you have to have a Torah, you have to have all this. So it's funny so when you say somebody's off the derrick. Not in Gansa Meshuga, right? You don't want to be completely Meshuga, right? What off the derech? Yeah, it could be in the good off the off the uh, path. That's the whole idea, yeah, yeah. and that's what the temple was made of. Yeah. The temple broke norms. There was nothing normal in the temple. Right. There was miracles. It was a place where Jews connected to a higher world, to a higher reality. That's what we got to do in our own temples. You make a temple in your own home. Go out of the norm. Go out of your comfort zone. That's the that's the message. Have a good day.